Well, uh, we're at the Asian Fast Food Association 2021 conference and it's been a fantastic day. We've had some great speakers, we've had John Barnes earlier on today, but there's no greater legend in cricket than Farouk Engineer. He was my boyhood idol as I was growing up. Probably the first wicketkeeper batsman in the world that showed that a wicketkeeper could be more than just a wicketkeeper. So Farouk, it's a pleasure to meet you today. Absolute pleasure, Jack. You're, you've been an old friend of mine. So t tell me, Farouk, as a young man coming to a different country... Or yeah, you, you, you introduced me as a wicketkeeper batsman. Yeah. That's, that's the right way, because nowadays there are batsmen wicketkeepers. Right. There are batsmen who can always, also keep wickets. Yeah. But in our time, predominantly, you had to be a wicket keeper. People like myself, Alan Knott, you know, he, he was a great keeper too. Yes, my, it all started well over 50 years ago because um, it was in 66, in fact, that changed my whole life. Yeah. I, was a, I was a pilot, by, you know, I had qualified as a pilot. Yeah. And I was playing cricket, you know, amateur cricket. And then, gradually, university cricket, yeah. state cricket, test cricket. And before I knew, well, I'd, I'd scored one of the fastest centuries in test cricket. Yeah. I got 94 before lunch of the first morning of a test match against the West Indies. But that's a, that was an era where 100 runs was probably a lot for the whole day, never mind before lunch. Absolutely, yeah. And these were Wes Hall, Charlie Griffith, yeah. Roy Gilchrist, yeah. Gary Sobers, yeah. some of the fastest bowlers in the world who took great pleasure in seeing blood on batsmen's faces. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't have any helmets, yeah. no protection at all, you know, no a pink plastic box that was hardly any, yeah. any protection. And uh, after 94 before lunch, Lance Gibbs came on to ball first, yeah. first over after lunch. And it was so strange seeing a ball being tossed up. Yeah. I think I hit him straight out of the ground. <laughs> the ball is still traveling as we are talking. Yeah. That's how we got the 100. What ground was that? It was in Chephok. It was a green top wicket where the West Indies won the toss and put us in. But I was invited by four English counties. It was John Arlott, yeah. the great yeah, commentator, commentator, who initiated the whole thing. And he wanted me to play for Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Soon Worcestershire got hold of it. So Worcestershire, then Surrey, and you know, Leicestershire and Lancashire were the last in the scene. I, with a game was played at Southport instead of Old Trafford because yeah. the Old Trafford was waterlogged or something. And I kept on hitting this Lancashire bowler to the railway lines, yeah. hit him for about seven or eight sixes, till somebody pointed out that that was a great brand, Statham. Wow. You, know, I, you know, from India, we are humble people. Yeah. You respect senior cricketers. I almost apologized to him, you know, when I read it, it was the great brand, Statham. Yeah. You know, I, but anyway, <coughs> I've been. You know, my whole life I played with Lancashire. Yeah. Myself and Gary Sobers were initially invited to yeah. to represent Lancashire, but Sobers and Lancashire couldn't agree to terms. So I qualified the first year, and I recommended the name of Clive Lloyd for the year after. And um, we had a chairman, Cyril Washbrook, yeah. but he said, but Farouk, he wears glasses. I said, never mind his glasses, Mr. Washbrook, you sign him on. You won't go far wrong. My roommate for, for 10 years, and what a great partnership we had. We won everything in cricket. And we were the darlings of Lancashire. Are you still in touch with Clive Lloyd? Very what a, much so. We were in Dubai till three days ago. What a wonderful conversation that would be having with yourself and the great uh, Sir Clive Lloyd. Um, as well as Sir Clive Lloyd, who would, who's your idol uh, as far as Indian cricket is concerned? Past and present. One well, past and one present. I had... Uh, just because Polly Umbriga was my captain, yeah. you know, and I learned a lot from him. So I suppose he was my idol, but nobody I could um, copy in wicket keeping. Godfrey Evans yeah. of England was uh, yeah. the closest. I'd never seen Godfrey, just seen films of his. Yeah. And I tried to not copy, but try and learn from his techniques. You know, he used to stand right wide out. So, yeah. so if a young wicket keeper is listening, stand right wide out so you can see the whole thing. Yeah. But then you've got to be really quick to come down the leg side, yeah. you know, for leg side stumping. And my first year with Lancashire, off Brand Statham, of all people, I got about three or four stumpings yeah. when the ball wasn't carrying. And um, the great man said himself that had I been playing, had I been behind the wickets 
for him throughout his career. Yeah. He would have probably finished with twice as many victims. Wow. So, I mean, that's a huge compliment coming from a great man. So, what top tips would you give to young cricketers growing up today? Particularly with the Yorkshire crisis now, young Asian, South yeah, Asian what cricketers, what would you say to Yorkshire them? Yorkshire crisis is sad. Yeah. It's sad for the, for the game, sad for the community. You know, it's, uh, it's just... It's just sad. Luckily, I played for the Red Rose, yeah. where I've had nothing but a lot of love and affection. Yeah. With the res result, I'm a senior. I'm a lifelong vice president of the club, yeah. and so is Clive Lloyd. Yeah. Again, we are the two. We have been inducted as legends of Lancashire. Last year, they had an induction ceremony, yeah. and Clive Lloyd, myself, and Jack Simmons were three only live live cricketers are the so couple of posthumous awards Yorkshire issue because it's current uh, we had a conversation with John Barnes and I, the way the conversation went was we should not be pursuing with the vigor we are individuals who made comments to Rafiki what is really tragedy is the way that the institution of Yorkshire Cricket Club tried to close him down, shut him down, the way that the TCB shut it down, the way the institution denied there was a structural He's got a issue, good point. an institutional issue. John Barnes, did he suffer any racial discrimination himself? He, he, yes, he did. Because he was one of the first. Yeah, he, he suffered, yeah. but he, he, he tells a different story. Yeah. And we'll, we've got that captured. But from your point yeah. of view, do you think that there's a structural issue in cricket that denies our South Asian cricketers getting to the top? Yes, ECB could have handled it much better. Yorkshire County could have handled it much better. I don't think they realised that this fellow will go public and, yeah. you know, they just thought he's a, he's a little threat, you know, have it'll you keep him quiet. But I mean, Sorry. It's, the whole thing has been a sad episode, really, yes, you know. Sir. You may have a story yourself, but uh, obviously I played cricket much, much lower level than you. But the youngsters I played with... Sadly, you were good, Jack. I wasn't. The, the you told me so yourself. The youngsters I played with were good, but they were blocked from getting above the Colts level. So these young men that grew up to be fathers, yeah. three, well, three of them um, produced uh, English cricketers. But they, because of the discrimination they faced in Warwickshire, their sons went to Worcester. So Kabir Ali, yeah. Shabir Ali, uh, Moeen Ali, uh, Syria. Now, Atok Cricket Club yeah. faced so much racism as individuals, they collected together as a team. So yeah. Atok Cricket Club in Birmingham is probably the top Asian club, producing test level cricketers, not for Warwickshire, but for Worcestershire. So is there similar well, examples in your... I'm uh, not privy to, yeah. to that, so I, I'm in no position to comment about that. But if that's happened, it's sad. Yeah. And it's high time it's rectified. Because I'm sure there are many Asians. Yeah. You know, the way India, Indian and Pakistani players mm -hmm. have been playing. Uh, the whole England team could be Asian cricketers. It could be. So in India, but, let's just yeah. try. Yeah. One of the other issues of racism in cricket is about class. Is there a class issue in cricket as well? where? In, in the UK, if you are of a Jack, upper class... there's not a class private. issue only in England. No, we have a class go. issue in India. That's where I was going to go. So in the UK, if you go to a private school, you're going to get the best wickets, the best coaching, yeah. no matter whether you're Asian or African. What's the... Yeah. What's the Can I'll tell you a, a very a simple point. example. Uh, I'm, I'm a Parsi, yeah. you know, and it, Parsis generally are Aryan race and they're the fairer mm -hmm. in complexion and all that, that doesn't mean you're a yeah. superior. So I don't believe in that nonsense yeah. at all. Yeah. But um, this fellow was a darkish Parsi, and he married an Irish girl, yeah. and they had the first child. So the mother yeah. asked me when I was, you know, when I'd come back from England, mm -hmm. did you see my grandchild, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, who does she look like? I said, any mother would be pleased if I said, your child, your grandchild looks just like your son. You know, but she was a bit displeased. The, oh, oh, in that case, you know, he must be dark and not mm -hmm. fair as the... So, I mean, that class system exists in India, unfortunately. It still exists there. But, um, again, you see adverts in newspapers. Fair yeah. wife. You know, anyone looking for her, yeah. she's got to be fair. She has a better chance of getting a husband, you know. But, I mean, 
How stupid is this? Yeah. You know, so how, how naive are we? Let's bring you back to cricket and your life in the UK. You've travelled the world, but you still settled here in the UK. So what, what keeps bringing you back to your home in Cheshire? Well, home. I call India because I'm very proud to be an Indian. But I'm very, very proud, equally proud to be a Lancastrian because the way they've looked after me, given me love and affection, and I've spent more years in England. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make me an Englishman. You know, I'm, I'm very much an Indian at heart. I enjoy eating with my hands, as you'll see me tonight. You know? yeah. But um, I'm very proud to be here. Yeah. You know, if I'm not supporting India, I will definitely support England. Yeah. You know, against Australia or, or, or any other country. Because I feel I'm obliged to do that. They, they've been good to me yeah. here. And um, so this is my my second home so to say. I, th I think that's a good way to sum this so the conversation up. Um, South Asian uh, British uh, youngsters will support India potentially against any other team other, uh, but when it comes to England they'll always support England against Pakistan or against... Yes Jersey. Jack by the same token yeah. I've come across young second generation Indians yeah. who will support England yeah. And I don't blame them My at all. My son does it. <laughs> I, and I don't blame them at all because they don't know. Yeah. They've not been to India. Yeah. They've just heard about that yeah. the parents are from India. Yeah. But they know no, nothing different. They're, they're, yeah. So I don't blame them at all for supporting. Yeah. You know, it's their, it's their look out, you know. And, and sport is a great binder, great Absolutely. team builder. And that's what you've managed to get through cricket and through the love of the local community. The very expression that you do something wrong is not cricket. Yeah. I mean, I mean that that itself shows the loveliness of the game, you know, the humbleness of the game. And when these shenanigans go on yeah. in cricket, it saddens an old timer like me. You know, it saddens that it's ever happened, yeah. and saddens if, if it's actually happened. I don't know. I, th I think that's a lovely way to finish this conversation. Farouk engineer. Uh, view about world life and life itself is that the term it's not cricket while some of these issues that arise in cricket whether it be unfair play or whether it be discrimination or the Yorkshire it's just not cricket we ought to be playing it as the I know I know we're short of time can I just add something in our time we didn't play for money yeah we got paid 50 rupees a day and I remember batting with Sunil Gavaskar against New Zealand we're beating them in four days and uh, all sorts of messages were coming from the dressing room. Okay, don't finish the match this evening. <laughs> we'll miss out on tomorrow's 50 rupees. Yeah. 50 rupees? Yeah. What is 50 rupees? Oh, gosh, I mean, it was nothing even in less there. than a pound. Yeah. But you played for the love and for the pride of playing for your country. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned about my charity very kindly. Yeah, yeah I'm a patron of Atsalia Foundation mm. in, in Mumbai. It's for homeless children children who are abused by even their own relatives they they rush to the, the metropolis they call the railway children also because they come by trains and all that and they're grabbed by unscrupulous people who turned young girls into prostitutes or whatever what, you know so this home gives them shelter gives them clothing food teaches them a trade and gives them a life that they wouldn't have had otherwise so well, please, please support it's a, my charity. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful cause. For the Asian Fire Association, it's a pleasure to have a conversation with you. Pleasure to support your charity once again. And we'll continue to support it uh, as long as we can. You're a buddy, and Jack. Thank You've you always been much. a buddy. Cheers. Thank you for the great work you're doing. Okay.